Hey there friends, it's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping by today. I have a new layout to share for Hip Kit Club and this is for Cut File Tuesday. So I'm going to be using one of the exclusive Hip Kit Club cut files along with the 2020 September kits. And these are the papers. I've already cut into them for my layout for last week. And the bulk of the kits this month are made up of the Crate Paper Marigold Collection and the Days of Splendor collection from Pink Fresh Studio. And there's the cut file that I'm going to use. And then I have three cute pictures of my older daughter there just looking adorable. And I printed them kind of small and I thought that I would kind of tuck them in and around these pretty floral pieces and leaves on this little banner shape. I'm not quite sure exactly where all three are going to go, but that's kind of where this idea started. And I cut the cut file on white textured cardstock and I'm going to do the old fashioned trick of backing it with different pattern papers. I love this technique. It's pretty easy to do. And so I thought that I would start with the actual banner. And I really like this dark wood grain. And I know it's brown and I'm not really one to use brown, but something about it being wood grain it just looked really pretty and i like the way it looked against that creamy white and the pink and so i thought you know what we're going to make this kind of a woodsy kind of fall theme since that's what the kits are basically made up of lots of fall and muted colors so i'm going to start with the brown and the brown is you know actually a neutral color so anything is going to go with it um, at least anything in the kits the, there's a couple of different pinks there's some blues and uh, golden yellow colors and so i thought i would start with that and then you know the rest of this cut file is flowers and leaves and so it's going to look kind of natural i wanted a couple of different colors uh, for the leaves and then try to go with as green as i could with the leaves and all i'm doing is tracing each shape with a pencil and then cutting it out just a little bit wider than the pencil shape and then gluing it down to the back of the cut file and a couple of minutes later okay a lot of minutes later here is the final cut file and i did cut a lot of pieces from some of the pocket life cards that's where i got most of the green shades for the leaves but um, i also thought that i would mix in a couple of floral and leaf die cuts from the pink fresh studio die cut pack not sure where they're going to go yet, but I like the color mix. I like that I've got some light blue, some uh, a couple of different shades of pink, even some purples in there, and then a peachy color. I just wanted it to be bright and colorful, even though these colors are more on the subtle muted side, you can still go kind of on the bright side and do lots of color, even though they're not super bright rainbow colors. So I don't know how the photos are going to go. I'm just playing around here. Not sure. I don't really like the two stacked on top of each other like that. But I know I wanted at least one photo to overlap the, um, the cut file there. But I just I didn't want to cover up a lot of the flowers. So I'm going to have to work that out. But I just decided to go with white cardstock as my background. And this is an experiment. Okay, I'm not going to use any gesso here. Because I always use gesso, as you know. And whenever I use the Lindy's powders, they just tend to get really, really light and almost, not completely disappear, but see how bold this blue color is? It, it's going to dry really, really light if I did this on top of gesso. So I thought, you know what? Let's just go without gesso and see what happens. I'm going to do the same technique I would if I was using gesso. We get this color in the color kit this month. This is the Lindy's Magical color is called whale watch blue and it's really pretty navy and i noticed right away when i activated the powder with water since i did not have anything on the background the water it ran a lot quicker i i uh, noticed that when i have gesso on the paper it kind of slows the flow of the water down and so i was getting water just kind of sloshing all over the place and i know that i have a lot of water on this paper but you see me do this technique a lot if you've watched any of my videos and it was just kind of see that little spot it was just running really fast kind of like i felt out of control making this part of this background and right away i knew this ain't gonna work i um i'm spoiled with the gesso and another thing you see how you can see 
how it kind of soaked through the paper. Okay, look at this. This is the difference in no gesso and gesso. Do you see the shape of where the water landed? That's exactly how it dried. I do not like that look. I mean, for me, when I'm making my own layouts, I just, I like the edges to be a little bit softer and faded. So guess what I'm gonna do? Yep, I'm gonna go right back over it with the gesso and I'm gonna use white instead of clear because I've already added color to this background. Normally I would use clear gesso when I'm starting fresh with the white cardstock, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to cover this up completely. I'm just trying to prep it because I'm gonna go back over it and we're gonna try it again, even though I know what's gonna happen. We're gonna see, this is an experiment again. I know I, I seem like I make these backgrounds all the time and I should know what I'm doing by now, but I still feel like I'm experimenting with each one, you know? Uh, I, <laughs> especially with the Lindy's and my gesso obsession. Uh, I just like the effect that the gesso creates, no matter what products I'm using, whether it's shimmers or regular watercolors or gelatos. You see the difference here in how the water is running a bit slower and but when it runs out of where I want it to go, I can just soften it with more water and it's going to leave this nice faded hazy edge around the shape, if that makes any sense. I just, I like that faded look and I don't like the way it just looks so harsh around the edges without the gesso. I like the fact that I can kind of dab it up and it's not going to just soak right through the paper. I feel like it's a little bit more controllable when I have the gesso. And I just like to, to turn the paper upside, not upside down, but from side to side, this way and that way, and let it just kind of run and make its own natural shape. But I still want it to be kind of controlled. Um, what I've decided that I wanted to do at this point is just create this nice big blue splotch behind everything. And you can see here that it did dry a completely different color. But I do like how it looks. I, I like that I chose the blue color for the background. What I think I'm going to do is a little bit of mixing and matching. Now this color is a shimmer spray and we did get this in a color kit. It's probably been over a year ago, but it's called, what is it called? It's called Deep Blue Sea. And uh, yeah, it's been a while, but we did get it in a color kit and you can see there, I only got a couple spritzes out of it because it's practically empty, but I love this blue color and it goes really nicely with the Whale Watch Blue from Lindy's. And I feel like blending these two together, it's just gonna give me a little bit more of a, a deeper blue color, which is what I was going for. And it's gonna help the, um, the fading out. You can see there the difference there. Now that's the color I was going for, it's nice and bold and dark and I like how the edges look kind of faded out and I decided to flip the cut file upside down I like the way it looked a little bit better this way and I liked that I could layer one photo on top without covering up too much of the flowers so I think that's how it's gonna go I'm gonna do two up top and then one on top of the cut file and I wanted to kind of add a little bit of dimension to the wood grain part. So I'm going to smudge a little bit of white gesso on a couple of the spots there just to kind of make it look a little hazy around the photo and then kind of around where it folds around the two pieces that are on the edge there. And it just gives a little bit of dimension, uh, makes it look a little more, uh, have a little more depth. Not too much, but a subtle, a little bit of a subtle difference. And then I'm going to pop up the cut file using some adhesive foam here. I'm just going to cut a couple strips that I have. And this is uh, kids craft foam. I get it from Walmart. It's pretty cheap, easy to cut, any shape, size you want, and instant dimension there. So now that the background is pretty much done, I'm going to start to work on the photos. And the only thing at this point that I'm going to layer behind them is just a little bit of white tissue paper from my own stash. I like to add that behind my photos most of the time just to give it a little bit of a messy layer behind the photo. It's very subtle, you know, there's no color to it, but it just helps give a little bit of separation between the photo and the background. It just helps it pop off the page just that much more. And I went with black and white photos here because the colors really did not match anything that I was using today. And, you know, she's just sitting on a bench in the doctor's office. And um, I think she was 
sitting, I think the bench she was sitting on was like a bright royal blue. And um, I think there was some red in there too. So it was all these bright primary colors. And so I printed them in black and white and I feel like that makes them a little more neutral. So I can use whatever on the page and it will match. I'm gonna bring in a couple of these awesome, soft, puffy, gold thickers. Those are probably from Crate Paper and they are perfect. They're soft and puffy and bendable and they stick really well. I'm gonna use a couple of leaves and flowers just to give some pops of gold. I love using gold. Well, who am I kidding? I like using gold on pretty much anything, but I think the gold looks especially pretty on fall layouts. It just kind of has that warm fall vibe and uh, I think this gold is pretty. It's not too shiny. It's not too matte. It's perfect. I'm going to pull a couple of these little banner stickers from the Crate Paper sticker sheet and I'm going to make them into die cuts by attaching them to some white cardstock first and then cutting them out because they're kind of um, transparent. You can see through them and I wanted the color to stay true to color and the only way to do that is to put white behind it. And I did decide to add something else as a layer behind the two top photos. So I'm just going to do a little bit of tearing and cutting of some of the pocket life cards. Um, a peachy color one on the left and then a light blue one there on the right. And I think just that subtle color of layer makes such a big difference. You know, sometimes you don't need something huge to make a big difference. Sometimes it's those little small details that you know you're looking at the layout and you don't really know what is it that I like about this this area of this page and it you know it's just a small detail um, so sometimes it's the tiny things that really make something pop or stand out um, I added some purple thread underneath the little banner there because there's a purple flower up at the top and I'm gonna you know echo that color a couple of times around the layout and I added some dark navy blue thread up here at the top I'm gonna wind up changing that out for some orangey yellow I think it pops a little bit better than the blue and now I'm gonna start to glue things down um, I don't want to remove anything because I like where everything is so I'm gonna very carefully just kind of pick things up and try to glue them down where they are very slowly little piece by little piece and yeah very careful not to move anything and I'm using the scotch tacky glue in my bottle that's the fine liner bottle that glue does not come in this bottle um, the bottle is sold separately and it comes empty and you can find those on Amazon and if you want to get one make sure you get the one with the yellow label the needle is a little bit bigger and uh, that glue will come through it perfectly. So there's all the dimension and texture. That's what I've got so far. I'm trying to decide on my title. It's the perfect spot right there to the right of the center photo. I want to use one of these gold scripty stickers because it's just perfect. Either any of them would have worked. Um, so I'm going to go with lovely. They're the perfect size, the perfect font. That was just the perfect spot for my title. So this, the title really did not take me a long time because the words were already there. I just had to decide on which one. I'm gonna add in a couple of, let's see, a little chipboard sticker right there on top of the photo from Pink Fresh Studio. And then I'm gonna go through the Pebbles Jen Hadfield stickers. I'm gonna go back through the Crate Paper stickers. I really wanted to add in a couple more pops of black since my photos have black in them and I decided to go with a couple of these little black clear butterfly stickers a couple of those up at the top just kind of scattered those randomly because you know that's how butterflies look they are never in a specific formation so I added two of the same size and then a smaller one I found a couple more flower stickers to add in here and there this sticker book is awesome I, I wanted to just use so many of the, of the things in there. Um, I didn't go with any of the rose stickers though because I felt like there weren't really any roses in that style on this layout. So I'm going to save those for a different page. I do add in a couple of these shiny gold and white leaf sprigs on the edges of the banner. 
for another little pop of gold. And then I add a couple of puffy stickers from crepe paper. These are two tiny, I mean tiny, blue hearts. And then I wanted to use this little camera that I had prepared for my what layout last week and didn't use it. It's from the the um, sticker book and I already put white cardstock behind it. I think I'm going to stick it right here by this circle sticker. Try to use a couple more things, but I just decide to kind of end it here. I feel like it's plenty busy enough. I don't want to crowd the top or the bottom or anywhere else. So I'm going to go ahead and write in my journaling right down here at the bottom. And I'm going to use, thought about using my black pen, but I'm going to go with my metallic gold pen. And then I'm um, almost done. I do off camera add some gold splatters, but that's the final layout. I love how this turned out, even though my background, you know, like I said, it was an experiment. I like how the color kind of plays off of all the other colors. It stands, uh, it stands out, but it also makes all the other things on top of it stand out. I think it goes really well with the gold and all the other colors that are mixed in there. And yeah, this is my second layout using the 2020 kits. And, you know, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone because I normally create summer bright pages. But I'm liking what these pages are kind of motivating me to create because I really love the colors in this. I love this cut file. And I like how this turned out. And I hope it gives you some ideas to try. I hope it inspired you in some way. I hope you guys have a great week. And I want to thank you so, so much for being here and for watching. And I will see you next time.